Hey guys, we're gonna continue talking about memory, um, specifically forgetting and improving memory. Oh crud, what did I forget this time? Almost like Neville Longbottom in uh, Harry Potter with the rem Rememberall. Um, yes, I understand, I am an odd human. Now with this, we have to look again at what memory is. There's three stages of sensory memory. Um, so we've got the icon <clears throat> excuse me, iconic, brief, photographic, acute, or accurate, I'm sorry. Um, this is very small. This is going to um, bring up literally just pictures. You've got your iodetic, rare. This is the photographic memory. This is very rare, people. This is not how Hollywood uh, says it is, but it's, it's there. It's just not as often. Echoic, um, and I'm probably saying that word wrong. These are, uh, you randomly hear something, you're like, I know that, I know that song, I know that sound, where did I get that from? So sensory is very, again, it's a very subjective like most memories are. Uh, you've got two different types of memory. You've got your short term, this is working, um, and this is in, this, in the moment. So uh, you see something, you can name it, and 30 seconds later, you have no idea what you just said. Uh, and within that, you can uh, remember stuff. Typically, people are going to either remember the primacy or primary first or recency, or recency, okay, words are hard, um, effect. So you're either going to remember the first or the last. Now, there's a difference there because every once in a while, people get really smart and then they chunk it. They chunk information together. Think about how we take notes and we chunk things of like nature together. Hopefully you remember some of it. You can do that mostly with like phone numbers, um, addresses. You can do that with cooking and baking and, and all sorts of stuff. Um, but eventually you want some of the good stuff to be turned from short term into long term. Now, if you've ever seen the movie Inside Out, this happens at night when she goes to sleep and that's an accurate statement for, for most humans. Um, and that's how your brain processes the information. Uh, some of the information will get tossed out and a lot of the or some of the information will get stored in long-term memory. Um, so some basic memory tasks that you should probably work on if you haven't already, and most of us have done these things. Now, recognition, you can name, if I put, um, if I pull this into the picture, you know what it is. Even if I put, turn it this way, you could tell me it's Play-Doh. Uh, if I brought out an apple, or maybe I hold this up, you know exactly what this is. So these are recognition, and then it's recalling bringing something back to mind. That could be a memory, that could be information, um, it could be an idea. Sometimes you have to relearn it. Uh, so riding a bicycle, swimming, your muscle memory is there, so it will remember it, but you have to relearn it because you haven't done it in so long. It's quicker to relearn something than it was to learn it the first time unless you've had a traumatic brain injury, and then that's just a whole different ball game. Um, there's a lot of different reasons and types of forgetting. Um, not just forgetting, it's just your brain displaced the information. It pushed it out, it thought it wasn't useful, and so you're gonna get it out. Um, you're, you've got your interference. Now, your short-term memory is what's at play here, and this could be and is most mostly used when we're talking about um, information in the moment. Uh, if you're not actually actively listening, the interference of new information into your brain is, is hard to keep all of the old information. So you have to make sure you're actively listening, act actively paying attention, and you're actually um, processing what's happening. You've got decay, and this happens with all memories. It's just something that happens and you can't fight it. Um, this is why pictures have become so important, especially with people who have Alzheimer's or dementia. Uh, videos are really, really important. You've got repression. There's a couple different types of repression, but this is a purposeful forgetting of information. Um, you can repress an activity, you could repress a person, you can repress just a straight up memory. Uh, there's lots of different reasons that this would happen 
there are therapies to bring the information, the memories back, um, but it's a very painful process depending on the memory that's being repressed. And then you've got amnesia. Now, amnesia is usually caused by a traumatic brain injury of some type, and it uh, can be short-term memory loss amnesia, long-term memory amnesia. It could come back. You could remember the pieces. Uh, the biggest, probably the biggest movie that's been, been made from amnesia is 51st Dates, where her short-term memory was, um, was damaged, and so she had to be reminded of everything that was going on. Uh, so amnesia, here's three different ways or three different types of amnesia. Uh, Antigrade, antiret, that word. Antiretro, that, nope, see, brain. Now, losing the ability to store new memories. This is gonna affect your short-term memory and the movement from short-term to long-term. We've got retrograde. That's uh, gonna happen before the event. Now, my cousin um, had a really bad injury. Oh gracious, probably about six or seven years ago and he hit his head really bad. He was in a coma for two weeks. He has retrograde amnesia. He cannot remember anything the day of the, the accident. And so he's, and he will never probably remember that. Um, infantile, I'm sorry that it's um, cut off. Infantile is everything before the age of three. Now, every single human, I'll say 99.9% .9 of humans, um, have infantile amnesia. You don't remember what happened before the age of three unless something big happened, something traumatic, something um, something big, that's, that's the best word I've got right now. And so that's gonna be uh, just an over the, over, the, over the course of your life, you'll notice it that any, after the age of like 10, you don't remember what happened. Those are types of amnesia. Uh, next, we do have ways to remember things. Um, drill and practice, this is what a lot of education is based on. We are trying to change that, but that doesn't always happen. Um, this is also one that's really big in education. What do I already know? Okay, um, if I know that I like the color purple and I need to know something and it's, uh, it's colored purple, that's how I'm going to learn it. Um, so you can learn a language that way. I already know the color purple, so I can learn that word in Spanish, which don't ask me what it is because I honestly don't remember. Um, unusual associations, there is a way um, you take a sound and or an item and you give it a different word and you make a sentence out of it. So maybe you need to remember to pick up ice cream from the store so you make a whole story out of it. Um, Bobby took Susie out to get ice cream from the store. It's just a weird way to uh, remember things. Um, and then you have mnemonics. Now, this one's the most used. Um, this is also with chunking um, or even making information into a song. Uh, I know I use this in my history classroom where we turn uh, history information into songs. Or you can have phrases. Um, let's see, um, and now my brain is going out of whack, but for me, it could be, uh, that when I teach Buddha, I always remember that he's, um, drawn like a snowman with two circles. And that reminds me of the eightfold path and the four noble truths. It's a way to do it. You're going to use a lot of this stuff in, um, math more than anything else. Savants are really, really rare, but they're really, really cool. Um, so I should change this word because that's not um, accurate. It should be um, uh, mentally disabled. No, not even mentally disabled, but we should take that word out. Somebody give me something to change it with. Um, mentally handicapped. There we go. Now, this is an accurate statement. What happens is with autism, um, is they are actually have really high IQs or they could have really low IQs. It's usually one or the other. And there are some really awesome people who can use their memories to draw the entire cityscape of New York. 
Um, and that has happened and it does continue to happen. And it's a great way to utilize their artistic ability and give them meaning and not belittle these humans. And this guy right here, Stephen Wiltshire, he is a savant and he is able to, from memory, just saying things once, recreate it um, perfectly.